Hello, and thank you for joining us for Public Health in Action, where we discuss various public health issues affecting Stanley County. My name is Dennis Joyner, and I'm the Health Director for Stanley County Department of Public Health. And today, my guest is Dean Lambert. He's a supervisor with the Stanley County Animal Control Program. I appreciate you joining me today. Not a problem. Today's topic is very fitting for this time of year. Uh, as we get warmer in the spring and summer months, um, a lot of folks are out and about in the community and out in uh, uh, the outdoors. And today's topic is rabies. And we're going to be talking a little bit about what rabies is and how we try to control it here in uh, Stanley County. Uh, for many folks, they don't recognize that animal control falls under the public health department. And in many counties, it does not. But uh, one of the things that <coughs> we uh, base this association on is that animal control is first and foremost a rabies prevention program. And from that standpoint, it clearly addresses a public health need in our community. So as the weather has, uh, has warmed up and folks are out and about, um, uh, everybody now is starts to be a little more cognizant of rabies mm -hmm. in the community. And first off, Dean, what, what actually is rabies? Rabies is a virus that affects the central nervous system of mammals, uh, contracted through the bite of a rabid animal into a non-rabid animal. And after the incubation period, it can be contracted from that animal. It's just an ongoing process from animal to animal. So one of the things we often hear about too with, with rabies is the, the fatal nature of it. And, mm -hmm. and for the most part, um, uh, once a person uh, actually were to get rabies, mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, uh, our experience nationally and worldwide has been that it, it is fatal um, in most people. That's why early intervention is also important to try to prevent this. Absolutely. Obviously, uh, that's um, a huge concern. You hear people talk also about, well, we used to hear about rabies, but is that really a big issue now? Do, what is the extent of rabies in Stanley County? We've been tracking since uh, 1994. We've had 167 confirmed cases. Works out to about nine, a little over nine cases per year of positive exposures. And these are animals that uh, we find out about that either have been in an altercation with another animal or else someone uh, saw an animal acting strangely and we ended up testing, right. having those animals tested. Those, those numbers are all confirmed uh, interaction with an unvaccinated animal or with a human. Uh, an animal that's just acting strangely, uh, we try to remove from the situation, but if there's been no exposure, those aren't tested. Right, right. So these would have had to have had some potential exposure to an animal or, or human. That's correct. Okay. Uh, what are the main animals that we're seeing that have rabies in Stanley County? Our biggest carriers are raccoons, skunks, and bats. It does occur in, you know, foxes, dogs, cats. We've had a cow. We've had a horse. But those are... Are, are fewer in nature because of the the wild animals uh, moving around and are more apt to come in contact with a unvaccinated animal. Mm -hmm. The signs and symptoms of rabies, obviously this is moving on down the road if, if, uh, if someone were to uh, have some exposure, but for right. the audience, what, what are those signs? Starts out with headache and fever, uh, moves on to acute pain, uncontrolled movements, uh, depression, hydrophobia, which is the, in a sense, the fear of water. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of scientists say that it's not so much a fear of water as it is painful for someone to drink once it has reached that stage. Then they uh, end up being very lethargic and it can lead to coma and death being the end result normally by respiratory failure. Gotcha. So clearly something we want to try to try to prevent uh, at all costs. Uh, how is rabies actually transmitted? 
it's transmitted through the bite or possibly through a scratch of a rabbit animal during the shedding stage and that is after an animal has contracted the virus and it has traveled to the brain and at that point it is positive if the animal bites or scratches someone at that time the virus can be uh, delivered to the uh, to the unvaccinated animal or human through the saliva. So it's primarily it is a saliva based that's uh, that's correct. Action. I know mm -hmm. sometimes we'll get uh, calls or questions where uh, people are concerned about blood and right. those kind of things. Uh, it is contracted the, through the through saliva. saliva mm -hmm. yeah. um, in in terms of preventing rabies, obviously the animal control program has various uh, ways that we go about doing it, but. Uh, uh, what are some of the main main ways that we, we try to prevent rabies in Stanley County? The biggest and best is vaccinating your animals. Uh, if they are vaccinated and come in contact with a wild animal, uh, you simply have a booster shot within 72 hours and you're you know good to go. Uh, not allowing stray animals to hang around, uh, definitely not feeding uh, cats and things of that nature outside as a free choice, leaving food out all the time, which attracts, you know, wildlife. They're all, uh, all good measures to prevent it, but the biggest is to make sure your animal is vaccinated. All right. And one of the things that uh, is often, um, uh, you know, we see and we try to encourage folks to, uh, or, or try to discourage people from the issue of feeding wild animals. Mm -hmm. There's this uh, this sense oftentimes if folks have cats hanging around or right. a, a dog in the community, they're thinking somebody's gonna come by and pick it up. They really probably should report those animals as stray so that we could remove those from the property mm -hmm. or, or else identify them, uh, perhaps identify an owner if it's a, a stray dog or what have you. But feeding right. an animal is not typically a good choice if you don't know the history of that animal and what their post potential exposure was. That's correct. They could have fought with a wild animal, you know, weeks before and, you know, not be showing any signs or symptoms, look absolutely normal, but be a carrier. Right, right. When you get calls about potential exposures, what kind of, uh, what, what are sort of some of the typical kind of uh, exposure routes that you'll you'll hear about by the, from the callers? Large majority is uh, have dogs tied outside. Uh, raccoon came up, fought with a dog, ran away, or they kill it. Uh, same way with skunks. Most of the time, they uh, interact with. Uh, the domestic animal, you know, at home, either loose in the yard or tied, uh, with bats. Most of those, uh, someone will wake up in the morning or sometimes at night and there'll be a bat in the room with them. So, uh, you know, those are all pretty much the, uh, the ones we get. We do, you know, get calls on wild animals acting strangely, but I uh, always try to uh, make sure that there's been no uh, exposure with any any persons or unvaccinated animals. Gotcha. When uh, obviously puppies and and, and kittens um, are in a sort of a gray area early on, what's the right. time frame age-wise for them to be able to be vaccinated? State law requires as soon as possible after their fourth month birthday and the unfortunate part is it takes 28 days for the rabies virus to be I mean the uh, rabies vaccination to become effective uh, after it's given so you know it's critical as soon as possible after that fourth month birthday that they're vaccinated. One of the things too that state law a couple years ago was uh, uh, started including uh, an, another animal and that is ferrets. We don't right. see a whole lot of them around, but they are required to have the rabies vaccination just the same as cats and dogs. That's correct. Uh, do, do we 
know of many ferrets in the community? Uh, we curious. get a we get a report from the veterinarians each month about what is vaccinated in the uh, in the county at the clinics, and I think since uh, since January first we've had two ferrets. So we do have some in the county, but it's it's apparently not a very large number. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, most people are going to get their dogs and cats vaccinated mm -hmm. uh, through their, their local veterinarian, mm -hmm. and, um, and we certainly want to continue to encourage that because that theoretically ensures that that animal is being cared for on a regular basis. Correct. Uh, also, the animal control program does its own efforts to do clinics. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we sponsor... Uh in cooperation with our local vets, a rabies clinic each year, normally held in the spring, late April, early May, uh, according to what kind of scheduling conflicts the veterinarians may have, go out to uh, some of the more uh, accessible points uh, in the county, use a lot of church parking lots, uh, school parking lots, uh, lower cost, than uh, going to a clinic and having them done. And it seems to be a lot more convenient for people, especially if they have larger numbers of animals, they can take part uh, with them and go. Uh, they vaccinate right on the vehicle and uh, then take those back home and they may catch the veterinarian when he moves to his next stop with, with others. So it's, uh, it's worked out really well. We always have a real good turnout for them. And I know over the last several years, uh, we've, we've vaccinated in excess of 1,000 or mm -hmm. more each time. Uh, That's correct. When we've done those, uh, mm -hmm. uh, those clinics. And we do want to uh, publicly thank the veterinarians who uh, uh, assist us in putting the, uh, veterinary, uh, the, uh, the rabies clinics on in the, in the, in the springtime. Absolutely. Um, the risk, a lot of people want to know, you know, well, is, you know, rabies, we hear about rabies, but is it, uh, and I know we have some here and there, but, you know, is the risk really there? How, how, how great would you characterize the risk? Well, it being a disease that there's really no known cure once it's contracted, uh, something to be taken seriously, and the sad part is, is because if, if we had 10 cases a day, every day, people would be going crazy. But because it's so sporadic and infrequent, I think a lot of times it's dismissed as, you know, it's not, not really that bad, but it is a very serious disease. One of the things that uh, I think the listeners may need to know as well is that it covers the whole county. It's not mm -hmm. like we just have isolated spots where we have had over the past 10 years or so that's correct uh, positive rabies cases I mm -hmm. mean obviously the more rural uh, uh, wooded areas may have a greater population right. but uh, it's from one side of the county mm -hmm. and north and south that's correct in the city and in the country uh, we do have a board at uh, animal control that we we track uh, positive cases on. Uh, they're not very precise. We put them as close as we can. We use pins on a board on a map. Uh, if the folks would like to drop by and look just to, just to get an idea of you know, how close it could be to their home and uh, urge them to do that. One of the things too that happens, I know that animal control officers, if there is a, a positive exposure in a community, we go an extra step there to try to alert the immediate community. If you could share a little bit about, about that. That's correct. We've always in the past used a uh, door hanger card, a uh, real bright green card, just to, to garner the attention of the public, to let them know that there was a positive exposure. Uh, we write the name of the animal, whether it be a raccoon or skunk, bat, what, what have you. Uh, recently, we've uh, been able to use the reverse 911 and uh, able to reach a, a greater number of people in a short amount of time. It's uh, 
it's really been a blessing that we've been able to use that. It uh, saves on manpower, plus it saves the uh, the the time that someone may not uh, come home till 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, and with the reverse 911, it may call their cell phone or you know their home phone, and they may check messages, and you know they may know earlier, and that's that's always a good thing. Right. The uh the, the nice thing about that too is that it's uh, it's not to necessarily scare people, mm -hmm. but it is a reminder if you've got unvaccinated pets, mm -hmm. um, it 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 brings it home very very quickly that uh, you That's know this could have been uh, an exposure of your pet if uh, uh, if the the positive would have been on your particular property. That's and, correct. And to get it vaccinated as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone suspects an animal may be uh, rabid and they're loose in the neighborhood, what do you advise them to do? First and foremost, call animal control. Uh, if it's after hours, call the non-emergency number, 704-986-3700. That uh, goes into uh, the 911 communication center. We have an on-call officer uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, holidays included for those instances of emergency. Uh, try to keep your eye on the animal, if at all possible, because uh, the sad and unfortunate part is, if it fights with an animal or it's acting strangely, it goes into the woods and then reappears later, there's no way to positively say that it's the same animal you saw to start with. Right. So you run into uh, a lot of other issues with that, but absolutely call just as soon as possible. And try to keep uh, try to keep, try to keep an, an eye eyesight on it. That's correct. The whole time. Um, in terms of st how animals act when they are rabid, or and you hear of uh, differing types of behaviors, mm -hmm. but things that the public should be a little more alarmed about, I guess, are uh, those kind of characteristics or behaviors that you wouldn't normally see in, let's say, a skunk or a raccoon. Or right. What, what would some of those be? First and foremost, uh, everyone's conception is if you see a raccoon out in the daytime or a skunk out in the daytime, there's a problem. That is sometimes true, but not always. Uh, the more aggressive behavior charging toward uh, vehicles or, uh, you know, they're, they're not normally known to be very aggressive toward a dog that hasn't cornered them. If they come up and start a fight with an animal, you know, there's, there's probably a problem. Uh, charging toward cars or biting at a tire, something like that, and even uh, just, just wandering aimlessly can sometimes uh, point, point in that direction. There's more than one way that rabies affects animals. Uh, they sometimes become much more aggressive and they, they sometimes just don't know, you know what they're doing. Very lethargic. Right, yeah. very lethargic, uh, wandering aimlessly. So, you know, it's all red flags, but just because you see one in the daytime is not uh, not a real good indicator that it is rabid. All right. The other uh, point, too, that uh, I think a lot of folks um, kind of fail to think about is uh, uh, everybody likes fuzzy, furry, animals mm -hmm. and particularly children right. and uh, there's often that tendency to uh, want to go up and pet wildlife or right. all of a sudden maybe even uh, take that wildlife in as a quote unquote little uh, household pet mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of good reasons why that's not a good idea if you could share a little bit about that. Well, first and foremost is the rabies exposure possibility. Uh, second of all, it's actually illegal. Uh, you know, the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission kind of frowns on that. and We get calls occasionally from people that, uh, that do have issues with wildlife, whether it be raccoons or, or possums, and uh, they ask us if we can bring a trap and set it. And, you know, we, we let them know that we're not able to because those are governed through the the Wildlife Resources Commission, it is actually illegal without permission to, you know, trap wildlife. But uh, by all means, don't, uh, they are wild, 
even though they may seem like they're tame and gentle, they are wild. Right, and you could uh, save yourself a lot of, uh, of pain and discomfort by, uh, by staying a distance mm -hmm. away. And we really want to encourage parents and uh, caregivers or, 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 or caretakers of children to try to impart that knowledge to, to children to, uh, to, to stay clear of, uh, of wild animals in terms of the petting and mm -hmm. try to reduce that. Um, if someone suspects that their pet may have been in contact with a rabid animal, what's, what should be the steps that they take? Well, there again, first and foremost, call animal control or if after hours, the non-emergency number. Uh, limit the contact with the animal if at all possible. If it was a rabid or wild animal, uh, like we've said before, make sure that you know, you keep your eye on the animal, so when animal control shows up, you can give us a general idea of where the animal is at the time. It's imperative that we're able to retrieve that animal for testing if it did come in contact with your animal and it's not vaccinated. It's the only sure way to know if it is negative or positive. Right, and uh, that's, uh, that is the critical thing, and it mm -hmm. typically takes about, uh, with overnight, it's about a a day mm -hmm. turnaround time in terms of the testing of the uh, of the animal for uh, rabies exposure. And That's correct. Should point out too that all animals that may act or exhibit some types of uh, either aggressive behavior mm -hmm. or lethargic behavior, there are other types of illnesses that animals Absolutely. can get that may exhibit that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, just because someone uh, some animals acting a little strange doesn't necessarily mean that they're that they're that's they're absolutely rabid. correct yeah. um, when there is a rabid um, animal what does animal control uh, do for uh, uh, in, in the situation once we get a po positive response uh, what goes into play from that okay. point uh, starting back from the initial call if if someone calls us and their animal is unvaccinated and a raccoon came into the yard and fought with the, the dog, uh, let's say they kill the raccoon. We pick the raccoon up, send it for testing. At that time, we also pick the dog up to limit exposure to the animal. Bring the dog to the shelter along with the raccoon. The raccoon is prepped and sent for testing. Uh, it goes out on the courier the afternoon of the day we bring it in. And uh, normally, by noon or shortly after noon on the following day, uh, in positive cases, they call us. Uh, normally, if we don't hear from them by 2 o'clock, 2.30, or 3, we call them just to make sure. If it is positive, of course, the only recourse is to euthanize the animal if it's unvaccinated. If it is uh, negative, the owner's allowed to come and reclaim the animal uh, at no charge and uh, they are required to provide us back information of a current rabies shot within 72 hours of reclaiming the animal. Okay. If someone comes in contact uh, with a rabid animal mm -hmm. or uh, in the case where we think there may have been a positive exposure mm -hmm. of their pet, uh, the pet gets into a, a fight with a raccoon mm -hmm. and uh, they go out there to break it up and right. there's a lot of uh, handling of, of the animal and mm -hmm. saliva here and there and you don't know which whether it's the dogs or the raccoons or what right. have you there's potential exposure there absolutely what, what should the uh, the person do at that point they should see their physician and take the medical professional advice at all costs uh, you can contract it uh, if the saliva is on the dog and you rub the dog there's a cut or a possible way for the virus to enter your skin, even though you weren't bitten by the animal, it could still be contracted. So it's uh, it's important that Absolutely. you take that uh, very important uh, very seriously. Uh, I will point out too that uh, in terms of looking at exposure, I mean, just generally speaking, without saliva or what have you in contact petting or rubbing an animal that actually may be rabid mm -hmm. in and of itself mm -hmm. would not necessarily present an exposure That's based correct. on the CDC recommendations. That's correct. It's, 
you have to have the saliva expose your vehicle to mm -hmm. some type of open wound. That's the uh, carrier of the virus. To, uh, to make that case because mm -hmm. sometimes we'll have uh, questions from people who maybe uh, were concerned about a, a dead animal that mm -hmm. died uh, and they uh, were handling or they came in close contact. Right. They may have used a shovel but didn't mm -hmm. touch it or something. Right. They really weren't exposed Correct. Uh, in that situation. Correct. Um, what is the treatment for, uh, uh, for rabies? In animal or human? In animal. In animal, there is no treatment. If the uh, vector proves positive that the unvaccinated animal came in contact with, there is no treatment. There is the option to quarantine at a licensed vet for six months at the cost of the owner of the animal. But uh, in most cases that isn't done because of the, the money aspect. But as far as being able to get a pill or a shot and everything be okay, there's, there's nothing there. Right. And for, uh, uh, in, in terms of, even with a vaccinated animal, mm -hmm. we are still going to uh, want to quarantine for a 10 day period. And uh, in the event of a vaccinated animal fighting with a wild animal, uh, simply get a booster shot within 72 hours. We quarantine, uh, quarantine bites on humans uh, for the 10 day period to check for rabies. But if there's a definite exposure, it's not quarantined. Right. Um, is it possible to be exposed to rabies and not actually know it? Very possible. Uh, like I say, saliva on a, on a carrier, uh, you pet the dog or whatever and it could enter your body. Or in a case of bats in a room where you're asleep, uh, bat teeth are very small, abrasive. Uh, you could possibly be bitten by a bat and the virus enter your system and you not even know that it happened. Right. So that's one of the key reasons why if someone were to uh, realize that right. they've been in a room, particularly if they've been in, sleeping in a mm -hmm. room where a bat has been identified, that uh, they seek uh, medical consultation. Absolutely. And call us if, if it's possible, as soon as possible, that you realize the bat's in the room, call animal control. We'll remove the bat, send it for testing. Uh, now, if you lose sight of the bat, and when we show up, there's another bat there, there's no guarantee that it's the same bat and that's something you can't gamble with. Right. So, uh, you know, it's, it's imperative that you're able to be absolutely certain that that particular one is the is only the one. one. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Which can become challenging at times. Very challenging. Sure. Yeah. Um, what happens if, uh, if my pet bite someone or someone's pet bites me, uh, wh what should we be doing out in the community? Uh, if your animal bites or scratches someone, uh, call animal control, uh, seek medical attention. Uh, all doctor's offices are required by state law to notify us if they have an instance of someone coming in and uh, saying that they were bitten or scratched by a dog or cat and ferret, of course, but uh, if the animal is vaccinated, we can do a home confinement on the animal. Uh, that simply means if you have a secure place to uh, keep the animal away from other animals that uh, the primary concern being wild animals, if it goes outside, it has to be on a leash, uh, those types of things. We check it five days into the quarantine and at the end of the quarantine to make sure that the animal is still acting as normal as possible. Uh, if the animal is unvaccinated and bites someone, we bring them to the shelter or they have to be quarantined at a licensed vet at the owner expense. Uh, we quarantine them for the 10 day period. You can pick them up on the 11th day. Of course, there's a uh, $15 per day fee 
from the shelter for each day the animal's there, and it's simply four rabies. That's all we watch for. Uh, any anything else is uh, is moot. That's the primary concern. And that's assuming that the result comes back. Uh, if, for example, one was, uh, w we had an exposure where we were able mm -hmm. to test the animal, if it comes back negative, then we obviously know that that particular case there was not an, an exposure, but they would still correct. have to reclaim the, uh, That's the, correct. the animal. Mm -hmm. um, is there a particular time of year that uh, we see most rabies in the community? Uh, most seem to show up in the spring over into early summer and then again in fall uh, probably uh, mid-October, late September, mid-October through early November and it's, once it starts getting really cool it seems like it tapers off. Still occasionally do have them but mostly mostly in the spring and early falls when you see the majority. And that's when most of the uh, wildlife activity mm -hmm. is, uh, that's is correct. going to be more uh, active and mm -hmm. interactive with uh, adults or and right. kids and, and, and pets. So um, I guess the take home message throughout the whole uh, uh, program today is doing everything we can to prevent, uh, to prevent rabies and Absolutely. being a responsible pet owner. Uh, not only is it the law in North Carolina that pets be vaccinated or dogs and cats and ferrets be vaccinated, uh, it's critical for uh, assuring that uh, we don't have tragic cases of rabies mm -hmm. in the community. And um, if there's anything else you'd like to, to add at this point? Just that, uh, like you've already elaborated on, uh, vaccination is first and foremost. Make sure your animals are vaccinated. Uh, it's a difference between uh, simply going to the veterinarian and getting a booster shot. Uh, if they do come in contact with a wild animal or possibly having to be euthanized because they're not vaccinated. So it's, it's very, very important. Some of the most tragic uh, situations we've had to deal with has been a result uh, of an owner just forgetting and mm -hmm. let their vaccination slide. And uh, then that lo and behold exposure uh, occurs right. and they unfortunately have an uh -oh, uh oh moment, and uh, uh, it's unfortunately too late in, That's in that particular case. And they always say, "I knew he was out, and I planned to take him, but it's you got to get it done." Yep, yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, Dean, I appreciate your time with us today, and certainly, if folks have other questions about rabies and uh, animal control issues, they can contact you at the animal control program with. Uh, uh, the Stanley County Animal Shelter, which is located on Cobble Avenue, mm -hmm. and um, uh, they can uh, fill you in there with more information about uh, rabies and uh, uh, animal control concerns. So for this particular program, until we meet again, uh, I thank you for joining us and the uh, community college here for hosting us, and we hope that you have a very healthy day. Thank you.